Thank you uh, for coming out here. Can someone shut that door? It's very distracting. Thank you. So first off, I wanted to mention who we are as a charity. We're Project Pinball Charity. We place pinball machines in the children's hospitals of the United States across uh, this vast land of ours. We also do Ronald McDonald Homes, and we started doing this years ago, back in 2011. It was all because of one machine that we found that was in the children's hospital that was donated by uh, parents that lost their child from cancer. And I was restoring pinballs at the time, and I was called in to service this machine. And it started me on this journey uh, to give pinballs to the children and patients and families of these children's hospitals. So we're at 69 pinball machines donated right now, which is a huge journey. We're going to be dedicating another machine that was donated by Stern Pinball, Gary Stern. The Jurassic Park that's in our booth will be the 70th machine, which will be donated on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, at 10 a.m. down at Laurie's Children's Hospital. So we're so excited about that. So with our charity, we always want to include everybody because these kids in these hospitals are going through treatments and surgeries and we uh, even cut down the legs on the pinball machine just recently so it would be easier for kids to walk up to and people in wheelchairs uh, would have a better access to it. So this is where the story starts for our charity and the road that we have to take to get there. We're sitting on the edge of the stage <laughs> because our friend Zach, <laughs> Zach has to deal with this. every single day. He has limitations that he has to face. Yeah. It's not fair to Zach and to people out there. We have to do better for people like him. There's so many limitations that we take for granted, the able-bodied people. We just take it for granted. I mean, Zach is going to tell his story, and this is why, you know, I'm in tears, because we have to do better. And as a charity, we're offering what these people are going to introduce to you, to our patients. That way, no one is left on the sidelines while other people can enjoy a game of pinball. It's not right. So I'm going to introduce everybody up here because in, they need to be heard. First off is our friend Zach. We have Joe, John, Phil Jr. and is Phil Sr. Phil Sr.'s in the audience. I want you to really give a hand of applause for these guys before you even know what they're doing because I'm so impressed with them. And I'm going to hand it over. Okay, I'm going to hand it over to Zach. I'll try not to cry. 
Joel probably strangled me with the microphone cable before that. <laughs> That's bad. All right, everyone. So my name is Zach Christofferson, and I'm one of six founders of Inclusive, Inclusive Gameworks, and we're out of Denver, Colorado. It's a real pleasure to be here, and I, I thank all you guys for coming. Um, so I guess kind of my job here is to tell a little bit about the background of what we're doing, why we want to do it. Um, Inclusive Game Works kind of started as almost a little bit of a half-hearted joke in Joe and Aaron's basement of why, why Joe just wants to tell me all about this pinball stuff. Well, why would I care about pinball? Because I can't play it. Um, we own a brewery in Denver, all of the arcades and stuff that we go to. That's great. I go to hopefully see some friends and stuff, but really, I, why would I care about pinball? I can't play. Uh, that kind of keeps Joe awake a little bit, and the, the idea is, hey, it might actually be possible. Uh, that really filtered down into the six of us getting together and putting this controller together. Um, it started out as some bent plexiglass and exposed wires and electrical shock and <laughs> hopefully not ruining anybody's machines to now where we're, we're really doing this. And uh, Tom is in the audience as well with 5280 makers and he's been great helping us really design and streamline what I think is a really cool looking product that you know it's not just uh, a controller it's, it's a mod now and that's some that's a term I'm learning this weekend actually. <laughs> um, but why is it important why are we doing it um, it was originally just oh well, well play a couple of rounds of pinball with some friends but what we've found is that, and I've always kind of thought this, but it's now it's all right to share it, that disability takes a lot of things from you. It, it takes everything from you uh, towards the end of it. And that's just every day. And people with disabilities, and whether you see them or you don't, it, uh, it's just a way of life of learning how to let things go and give up on things. And, that's that's really difficult, but it's part of the strength process of uh, living with things like this. And what this controller has kind of done is give something back to me. Um, it's given things back to people that we've met that have one hand or have been in an accident, have back problems, or Hard, uh, hard time seeing or standing. It's it's giving back. I get to sit with my kids now, and maybe I can't go throw the ball, or maybe I can't go for that long hike. But we've been able to bond, and I've been able to have that parent moment, doing things with my kids, um, and date nights with my wife as well. Just getting to play a couple of games and it might seem like a silly game but that's a part of my life that was given back and I think in many areas that's that could be a life-saving thing when a person is mentally struggling because they've just they're, they're hurting and life is hard and but now you're getting this back and that's that's a really special thing and I think I also need to touch on the social involvement of encouraging people with disabilities to get out into the community and go to that arcade with their friends and check it out. It's not our tagline. It's probably on the back of one of these folks' shirts, but ADA is just the law. It gets me into the building, right? Inclusivity is the desire to have me there. What? What is more than just getting me to that table with the food and the drink? What helps me and other people with disabilities or whatever they're going through? What makes them feel like they should be there? And I, I think that that is the biggest key to 
what we're doing is that everyone should have that choice to play and everyone should uh, get to just enjoy things on equal levels and feel that excitement. So with that being said, I'll pass it on to the next one. I'm going to swap with Daniel here so we don't do that spaghetti scenario. If you can head over there or we're right here. Uh, my name is Joe Hahn. I'm one of the six as well. And uh, yeah, this happened in my wife and I's basement. Uh, it was pretty much against my will, but uh, we did it anyway. But uh, it's hard to talk about the financial stuff. I'm going to skip ahead here a couple. Uh, Phil's, I'm sk skipping through you, and we'll come right back to you. But it's hard to talk about the financials. This is Atlanta when we're talking about this, right? And uh, my job, I guess, is the financials. But when Daniel asked me, how do we approach the manufacturers, and how are they going to make money off of it, and how do we approach game rooms? And if it's not on the humanitarian side, well, if you look at some of these stats, uh, it's through the roof and none of us knew it, right? So if we're talking about 42 million people with a disability that may prevent them from even thinking they could play pinball. And uh, I mean, if you do the math real fast, it's 13% of the population in the United States. So if people are concerned about how do I make money, often people ask me, will he play? And they're talking about Zach Christofferson. Right, when we're talking about game rooms in Colorado, they say, will he play? Like he's the only one. <laughs> you know, like, uh, it's a very funny thing we brought ourselves to, right? And then if you go a little deeper, there's a, a heartbreaking stat. You saw that young man in Denver playing, the little, little guy playing. We had to ask his permission if we could play, ask his permission to photograph him, ask his permission to published his photograph, and then his dad sent us a nicety saying, we never feel like we belong, and you made us feel like we belong. <laughs> so if it's not in the heart, then we could grow this business and this community through the financials pretty easy. I mean, it's, it's just not even a debate. And then yesterday, just yesterday, Zach and Alicia learned a stat that one out of four of us will be disabled by 2030. So Zach said it's nice to have options. And I firmly believe it's nice to have the option not to play. And a year ago, he didn't have that option. He's now highly opinionated and has <laughs> games he hates. and. That's all part of pinball, right? Like, I also hate Hot Wheels. Sorry, American, right? Like, that's fine, you know? Uh, but anyway, uh, with that being said, on this journey, uh, I think we, we cast a small hook, and it caught Daniel's belt. And you guys know Daniel. It's like bringing in a great white whale now. So uh, we're just riding his coattails. And Daniel introduces the six of us to the Phil's group. And uh, like-minded people, and I'm going to turn this over. Uh, but thank you, folks. I appreciate it. Hey, I'm one of the Phils. I'm Phil Jr. Um, yeah, I didn't get a choice of my name. Um, <laughs> But I enjoy it. I enjoy uh, um, everything. You know, you know. Me and my dad started the, this company. It really is a refurb uh, business, and we were refurbing pinball machines and and doing it. And we ended up having a, a client um, for us that uh, he was living with with ALS, and so we would come in and we would uh, clean up the machines and get them. And he could at that time stand at the machines and uh, play them. And it, so somebody would assist him and, and get him to the machines, and, and he would play. And they would ask us uh, over and over, hey, can you make the flipper buttons a little more sensitive? And you, could you uh, make it where 
um, he, he can, it, it doesn't take as much effort for him to, to play, and so he did. And then it got to the point where he couldn't stand anymore. And uh, it had progressed to that point. And so there was a six, eight month period and, and everything where he, he didn't play. And they, the thing about it was his, his whole family played. You know, he played, his kids played, his son and daughter and the wife, and they all played together. They had a room in their house and they would go and play. And so they couldn't do that anymore. And, and so just like Zach was talking about, another thing got taken away. And so uh, they called us and just said, hey, um, we, we kind of have this idea of, of wanting him to be able to play. He can't use his hands anymore. Uh, he's in this wheelchair. We can do, do some things where we can lift him up, but, but uh, he can still move his feet. Can you help us out? And we said, of course we can, of course. And so we got to, to, to brainstorming and, and looking at things. And uh, actually, one of our buddies in, in the pinball group that we have, he, he was the one that came up with, hey, maybe you should use rock band pedals, because it has that kind of spring to them and, and things. And so we started the design process on it and uh, brought it over to, to Bob and Paula. Um, and I would like to just show this video real quick. So if you go back one slide. So Bob and Paula sent us this uh, a couple nights ago. And so that's Bob sitting there uh, at his Adams family pinball machine. And uh, we ended up modding that, that pinball machine to have an auto launch in it. We put a stern auto launch uh, mechanism in it so that he could actually sit at that machine and play by himself. Uh, before, his wife, if he was playing, sometimes she'd have to plunge for him or, or do something for him. And so he actually sits at that machine 15, 20 minutes at a time and can sit there and play game after game after game uh, completely by himself. And so it's one of those things that, one, he, not only does he gain the pinball machine back, but he gains a little independence, too, that he can do something that he wasn't able to do before. And so that started our journey. Me and John and my dad got together and said, "Let you know what what can we do? Um, you know, because we want this to to go to more than one person." And 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 Bob and Paula, they've been generous to us, and they say anything we can do to help uh, others and and to make this where we can get it to more more people. And so that's the reason that we designed ours the way that we did. We have a platform here. As you can see, Bob has his tilted down because that's the way his feet work the best. Uh, we made it very modular where um, you can actually adjust the foot pedals that if you have a different layout that your feet need to go into, you can adjust those with the Velcro. Uh, you can start the, the, the game um, and everything comes off. And then here comes Daniel and we get together at Southern Fried Gaming Expo and he sees it and he sees the, the, the vision behind it and he says, hey, I've got some people you need to meet. And so here, here comes Joe and, and we start talking and, and hooking things up together and, and stuff and, and uh, looking at these machines and, and stuff and we're like, well, here's, here's where we're all headed. You were coming from this direction. I was coming from this direction. We're all headed to the same spot. Let's get together, you know, and let's do this together. And, uh, and, and Daniel was the one that facilitated that. And, and so here, here we are of like, we realized that it's not necessarily one size fits all. And so there's some more things that we need to do, but this solves issues. The, the foot pedals solve issues. There's more issues to solve, but we will. And as long as we can push the industry forward in, in, in helping us do that, that we can reach the masses and reach more people to be able to play and give them something back. You know, I tell the story of, of uh, Bob. He uh, would get his wife to help him smoke a cigar. Okay? <laughs> he threw that one in there. Okay. Yeah. So. They just showed a picture of me underneath a machine. So. Yeah. I didn't do it. Um, no. So uh, I I tell uh, the story. Of, he he likes to smoke a cigar. So his wife would help him smoke a cigar, and his wife would ask him, you know, why why are we still doing this? You you have issues with your lungs and everything else. Why why? And he said, it's the only thing I have left. So, uh, 
the day we went over and got it set up for the first time and to see him smile and to see him play a game that he loved again, I had to keep going. We had to keep going. We couldn't stop there. So we have this journey that we're on. Um, you know, we could have taken a million paths to get here, but this is the one we're on, and this is where we're at. And so, you know, our hope and our goal is um, to continue in any way we can uh, to push this forward where it includes everybody, it includes anybody in any situation. And uh, pinball is one of those games where you kind of forget about everything else going on because it takes a full body experience of your mind and whatever, you know, whatever physically you can do to, to engage in the machine. And it, and it kind of gets you out of that rut that you're in. And so to be able to give that back, um, we'll do it all day. So you could see why I was full of emotions. I mean, there's so many lives that could be included. And as a charity, we want to do as much as we can in children's hospitals, in Ronald McDonald homes, we're in special needs schools. And even with those settings, we need to do better. So we're introducing uh, this controller uh, with our dedication on Tuesday. Um, that way people could use it for inclusive gameplay. We're looking at this also to uh, introduce uh, in future needs. So we're trying to get better at what we do as a charity. And I got great news. Um, I really pushed these guys to come to Chicago so we could really put everybody on notice. If you come down to our booth, you'll see all five manufacturers out of Chicago have machines there. And we told them what we were going to do. We're holding the first uh, pinball tournament for people with disabilities. And everybody is included. They just have to use the same controller that Zach would use. By doing so, they took notice. And Gary, uh, just moments ago, was in the room. He actually said to me that uh, they're going to be working on this. They're going to be talking to Zach. They're going to be talking to Joe. They're going to be talking to Phil and John to see how they could do better. So I think we have a really good start by having all of you guys here to show that there's a real need for this. And that's why I'm so glad that every one of you are here so you could be introduced to uh, struggles that people face. And I welcome you to come down and try out the controllers, the foot pedals. We have a machine that's lowered to the ground uh, we have another one cut out um, that a wheelchair could roll right into it. So come down, check it out, and these guys will be there to answer any questions that you have. And you could reach us through projectpinball.org um, if you can't reach these guys. Yeah. You got a email? Yeah, the, the, you can go to the philspinball.com uh, and, and reach us through there, or any of our information's there. Zach, where can you make? Uh, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Inclusive Gameworks, and we have a website. It's just www.inclusivegameworks.com. Um, you can also email us as well. We've got cards, pamphlets, all that stuff at the booth. And that's pretty much everything I have to say. Thank you guys for being here. here if, any of, if, anyone want, if anyone wants to ask a question or share your part of your story, that'd be wonderful. Uh, let's go do some. Um, we approach everybody. Um, anybody that wants to listen, we talk to American Pinball, we talk to Spooky, we talk to Jersey Jack, we talk to Stern. 
So. Now, Bug, Bug is pretty excited. And then Jersey Jack threw down with the custom door for our port uh, on, on the fly without us asking. So uh, it feels like today we, we threw a, 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 like a pebble at a very calm lake. Uh, but we pushed the industry just a little bit. So it's not just Stern. Uh, actually, we have a lot of kind responses, and I'm sure that those do as well, from uh, the majority of the community. Uh, American, perfect example today, doesn't have Seaflip for launch, and all of a sudden they're like, oh, we don't have Seaflip for launch. Uh, it's pretty cool stuff. So even if it's not controllers, people are thinking. trade group, the AAMA, which is all the coin lot manufacturers, and it seems to me that most of the controls on most games are switches, so you, you can broaden out and say, because the AAMA would be the group that would want to design a, a standard interconnect. And we heard in the 1130 session today about Frontier, the standard interconnect, and they'd be the ones that they bless and say, this is going to be the standard interconnect for these alternative controllers. Yeah. You've got the whole industry, not just him. Yeah, that's great info. Anyone else? Yes, sir. So actually, uh, the foot pedals, I'm sure, being the first of their kind, the, the controller being the first or second of its kind, what we really have to focus on are personal conversations, which, you know, maybe in the pinball world are not easy to come by, right? Uh, so there's going to be a lot of customization along the way. Um, a joystick maybe for a quadriplegic, a sip and puff maybe, right? You had a, an idea? Uh, those, those were mine as well. Yeah, I'm sorry, you took those from No, that's I, okay. I, I, yeah, we we're, practiced that. You know, we're robbing yeah, each yeah, other. Yeah, we are. So um, this isn't a one and done scenario. Uh, after being, so we were with Daniel in Children's Hospital in Denver, and quite literally three days later we had international requests for help to play pinball. So like Phil over there, uh, we're not done. We, we haven't even started. So I love that. Thank you for asking that question. Yeah. So, the statistic comes from the estimate of the aging population. Um, you have a very large part of the U.S. population that is entering those later stages of life, um, but you also have a large portion of veterans that uh, have been dealing with things. And again, this can be a big thing as the population does age and uh, keeping those social aspects for uh, elderly I think is extremely important and for me myself I've also found it uh, it's a big helper with me as far as uh, some physical therapy I've got my heart rate up my wife notices improvements in my hand functions um, I, it doesn't seem like much just doing this, but for a person that doesn't have very many functions, it's, it's definitely done 
that extra little bit and I think that definitely could be key as we look to the future at that growing percentage of people that is going to have a, some sort of a disability or issues with mobility and uh, yeah that's great if we can keep keep people moving and keep people happy. Come on, come on and practice. It's, uh, we have a, a few thousand games on you right now, but uh, you can catch up, no problem, don't worry. <laughs> Very nice, we're being hooked up with Cambridge. Yes, <laughs> so Erin is Joe's wife, just so you know. But there's, there's other uh, programs out there. There's actual facial recognition. Um, over in Europe, I believe it's in France, they have a camera that's faced at the player and it's called the Smile uh, System because they could play by just raising a corner of their mouth. But, like Aaron was saying, the cost, the cost is huge on that. So here you have a controller that's accessible now for a lower cost. We're gonna take that path now until we can find something better. No. So, well, Joe's improving this every single time I see it, so. That's not going to be a problem. But this is just the beginning. Like I said, we need to do better. Yeah. We need to make sure that everybody is included. And that's, yes? I just saw here, but are you going to be releasing the 3D print files to make one of the STLs? Yeah, STL files for the Blackster program. We're probably not going to go open source yet. Uh, we are talking to somebody about strategy of open source uh, we're brand new and we're not there yet we're, we're not ready to go open source yet we're talking to somebody about that strategy and we're just not there right now but our first threatened customer but he's yet to have a controller yeah, we're, we're I know I'm just giving you grief Cool, thank you. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's almost like to open that door to support this and to open up arcade bits. Like anybody that knows people, like I think it's the first thing to say, like tell your arcade owners, like tell the yeah. other people in your community to do yep. stuff. Yeah. As many doors open as possible uh, for anybody to come and play. Yeah, I agree with you actually. Um, so we got a grant from the state of Colorado, and uh, that grant. Um, Sorry, folks, but we haven't spent $10,000 yet. And uh, we're in five game rooms in Colorado. So when the, now it does help when one of the co-founders owns a brewery. That does help, right? But uh, we're in five breweries. We have two more on the way. That mindset is the perfect mindset, right? And Zach has a Deadpool in his basement right now. It's the Deadpool we created this on. Um, and we threatened them with, now that you have it in your basement, you're going to want to go play 30 different games today, not the Deadpool. You know, that mindset is going to be it.
Yeah, yeah, I love that mindset. Last question. Yeah, we definitely agree. That's why we want to invite everybody down to the booth to try these things out. And I think we have to go here. So thank you for your time.